Right, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Alison Saunders, has issued a consent to sex toolkits for the police and all lawyers involved in rape cases. It's no longer a case of just no means no. It, this has been clarified. Defendants in rape trials will have to show why they believed their victims decidedly said yes. But if she said yes when she was incapable of knowing what she was doing, that's not consent. And nor is uh, not saying no in that same situation. So does absence of refusal to sex amount to consent? Natalie. There you are. Um, <laughs> campaigner against domestic abuse. Now, let's navigate our way through this. Uh, now, the, 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 there must be clear, unambiguous, unequivocal uh, uh, yes. Is that, is that, I mean, a lot of communications in those situations are non-verbal. Is this, is this clear cut? Are there any grey areas? I don't think there are any grey areas. If, if you're going to place a part of yourself into somebody else's body, you know, why would you want to do that without being able to confidently state that, yes, that person wanted that to happen? And I think, you know, that that's the problem, that often this becomes blurry and this is, you know, the reason that people are concerned about this consent stuff is because there's this belief out there that um, women are constantly crying rape and, then, and, and mm. that they're lying about it. And that's just not is what is seen across society. Women don't report. Women, it's, it takes a lot, and, and men who you're assaulted, men so can be assaulted too. Yeah, sure, you know, there's no so problem of interpretation here. You think it's absolutely clear cut. Yeah. What if, uh, what if you, were, you were very, very drunk and uh, you said yes, and then the next morning you really thought, I, I didn't want to say yes, I was just completely a, a, out my head. What about that situation? I think we've, we've got to look at the fact that this is, rape is not about whether somebody is, is fundamentally about the rapist. So yeah. why is the conversation, why is the immediate mm. conversation, what about, what does she feel like after the event? What about the fact that he's intentionally targeted somebody who's drunk? Surely that should be the thing we're talking about. Because we're not talking about people waking up and going, oh, that wasn't very good. We're talking no, about I'm people. No, I'm saying about she was, you know, so drunk that the situation was, was chaotic and, uh, you know, she, she really, the, the next morning, she does feel that she's been violated. That's what I'm talking about. Not, not the situation where, oh, I wish that had never happened. Uh, I wanted it to happen at the time, but now I regret it. That's a different issue. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? I think if um, if somebody feels violated, then we have to acknowledge that that, that is a con that is a concern. This, that means that something has happened that is not okay. And actually, consent is better for everybody. Having explicit consent makes sex better because obviously mm. within relationships, we should really be enthusiastic. I mean, consent is too low a bar. We should be seeking enthusiasm. Just 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 one more. What about the situation that um, if you if you consent to sex with a condom? but ultimately he did not use a condom, is that rape? Yeah, because at the end of the day, if somebody has sex with me without a condom and I get pregnant, that was against my consent. I have, mm. you know, the implications of a pregnancy, of choosing mm. to either continue that pregnancy or have an abortion, have an enormous impact on my body. And so, or, you know, if they've got a HIV, if they've got an STD, that, mm. you know, this is, this is too serious to kind of go, oh, well, I accidentally forgot. No, yeah. we need to be intentional about this. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike Buchanan from Justice for Men and Boys, you, you set up this uh, political party, I think you've got candidates standing at the next election. You're also the author of uh, Feminism, the Ugly Truth. Um, it, this is clear, isn't it? This is absolutely clear cut. Natalie's made some very potent points. It's about actually being a, you know, a civilised human being ultimately, isn't it? No, 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 I think men and women have always understood about consent to sex. And I'd, first, I'd like, first of all, to say that... <laughs> I'd like, I'd like, first of all, to say that the, the, the narrative here started off exactly as I expected it to, um, that it's to do with, with consent from women. And we, but we know from major government surveys that over a quarter of sex offenders against the opposite sex are, are carried out by women. Um, and we have seven pages on se the sexual abuse of men and children in our, ma in our manifesto. But Mike, we're talking about rape, and rape de is defined by it, a, ma a woman cannot be a rapist. The legal, the well, legal situation. Well, of course, because the Sexual the Offences Act 2003 was drawn let's up by radical feminists. Okay, of <laughs> let's bring oh, it back. Really? Let's bring it back to this whole consent issue. Do you do you really believe there are grey areas? I think it can be quite. Uh, you know, no one would say that a man, let's say, targeting very drunk women, could be justified in a. You know, I wouldn't say them on the Sundays. But what, what about mild drunkenness? What about a sober woman? Who, who, who targets drunk men to have sex with and perhaps get pregnant by. 
and, and then, and then the, the, these men have a 20 year responsibility. 85,000 women a year are being raped. They and are this not. You're talking about They a, are not. You've just used government we statistics. We, we, I can use good We statistics. presented Laura Bates. With, we presented Laura Bates Absolutely. with a lying feminist of the month awards for oh, exactly that claim. So kind. Well, she's from everyday. She is. Can I just get back to the consent oh. issue? I just want to say, give me a situation uh, when you know two people have gone gone for a night out that there is a grey area. Have you not been in a grey area yourself? Um, yes, I have. Um, what but, was that? But, but, what happened? Well, I guess you know, people had, had had a drink or two, and a woman had a drink or two. Um, but at the end of the day, it's well, about, well, it's it, about but it was clear. It was surely cl consent was absolutely clear. Yeah, I think it was, but but but, but we're well, in a situation. Not a area, then. Well, no, no. But what, what I'm saying is that that, that, what, you know? what, that what is happening is that women are being taught to to, to not take any any responsibility for themselves, none That's at all. It's not about so, not so, taking so, responsibility. So, so, so no. they have the Chardonnay goggles on and they go to bed with Brad Pitt and wake up with John Prescott. <laughs> But this is about respons who is this is about infantilizing men if we say that men aren't capable of making a choice to have sex. It's not about taking responsibility away from women. It's saying men can't help themselves. Men men are gonna kind of not be able to be competently choose to and, and, and women to, to check that that other person definitely wants to have sex. And if we can't if men ca can't do that, then we, we've got a real problem. I can't this believe I can't believe, I can. well, I can't believe that, that everybody seems to be saying there are no grey areas. Of course there are grey areas. Look at the Chad Evans case. There were two men, they both both had sex with the same woman on the same night in the same place presumably within minutes or not much more mm. than about half an hour of each other one was found guilty the other was not found guilty but maybe that's of the course system. that is a gray area mm. how can that not be a gray what area? other gray areas are there what's what's your what's your <coughs> message then to young men and women well <laughs> my my message to both young men and women is is <laughs> don't get into the gray areas if you like um, you know our message to young men is uh, you, you, of course you have to make sure that this is more than consent but the message to young wi young women is uh, make sure I used to help run um, a, a police self-defense course and my friend the policeman who ran it the first thing he taught on the rape class in the course was make sure you say no you may have three men at your throats with knives. It may be obviously rape. You may be kicking out. You may make sure you say no. What, what are a rape class for women in, in how not to get raped? I mean, fundamentally, that's problematic. Surely, if we're going to talk about how not to commit rape, that should be about men not course, raping, yeah, no, not look, about women ridiculous. making different this choices. This is absolutely... No, I'm sorry. That, that, I mean, I agree with an awful lot of what you say, but that really is ridiculous. That's like saying the police shouldn't tell us how to lock our houses to keep them secure because it's not but our fault. you can't do anything about the fact that of you have... Of course it's the criminal. But there's a societal... But the societal message is that women are permanently sexually available. No, it's not. No, if, if it's a man. Lambert, 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 Lambert,
And, and that's where we're I getting. Think, I think this mm. is where we need to come back to education mm -hmm. um, because next week we'll be voting on uh, the End Violence Against Women, Women Bill in the National Assembly. And we want to see um, education from a very young age into healthy mm -hmm. relationships because, no, it isn't just about the women, but it's about how we interact with each other. And from a young, young age, um, if you're in a particular family, you may have a particular perception as, you, as to how you treat the opposite sex. And I think you do get a lot of this from the media as well. Mm -hmm. um, you do get the perception where the women uh, feel like it's their fault. Look at the way Chad Evans' victim has been persecuted. Mm -hmm. Tell me now if that's right. It is unacceptable. And I think that's um, in, the, in the press, that's been allowed to happen and it's been perpetuated. It's on social we, media a lot of and it, if to, we to had, be honest with you. If yeah. we had those education structures from yeah. a young age, I think we might, might not be having this debate here today. Lem Lembert, do you, do you seriously think that there are spurious claims of rape flying around? Well, we, we, know, we know there have been they've been recorded that occasionally happens now I think occasionally that is, very very well it, but it does happen and if we live in a just society you can't say well it's okay if, if a small number of people are found guilty of a crime they didn't commit or if even accused you can yeah. life can oh, be ruined but it, there's a, mean, less, a lower report a lower false reporting rate for sexual violence than for any other crime that's because, because, because the, of the gray area yeah. Yeah. No, it's because it's because actually people don't get it because give, it's, it's I'll because, I'll give, I'll because, give because there are only two witnesses to the, is it, there are only two witnesses to the crime but it's a lower reporting people are not false reporting on this what you're asking the what you're asking people to do is express a level of competence in a necessarily unclear situation when, for example people who are drinking which which cannot be reasonable to the extent that you're, you're wanting to say Bethan's got it right I think what Bethan said is about education and it's about judgment my friend Nigel Evans member of Parliament spent two years having his life wrecked because of claims that were made against him he was found guilt innocent of all the charges mm -hmm. now you said that it was mainly about women he happens to be a gay man, but he really went through the ringer on that. And at the end of the day, he's not the Deputy Speaker of the House of Commons, even <coughs> though he's proved to do nothing wrong. So let's not pretend that there are cases, that, sorry, that there are never cases that affect the mind. Audience in a second, if anyone wants to. I, I see you, I see you. Mm -hmm. I'd like uh, to talk about, th this is part of the wider issue of moral agency. Um, and the criminal justice system um, is, is, is incredibly lenient towards women. And we know that if male criminals were treated by the justice system with the same leniency as female criminals, five out of six men in British prisons today would not be there. So why are they Just Do you know what? Do you know what? Wait, 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 wait. Do you know what? I'm going to leave you to it, OK? Absolutely, absolutely no leniency for a rapist. Some of them are out after three years. How you can throw out the word leniency when we're talking about rape, the most heinous, violent Who kills a woman and gets three years? That's ridiculous. Against women is frankly abhorrent. The problem we have at the moment is James. reporting and a lack of conviction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly there are cases where, where people like Nigel, Nigel Evans are dragged through the legal system um, completely unjustly. But the big problem we have is under-reporting, under-convictions, and also this culture of victim blaming, where immediately yeah. when we start, start talking about this issue, it moves on to how drunk the woman was, yeah. what she was wearing. Mm -hmm. um, this says yeah. that we, the, the bigger problem is what's been talked about by the young lady there. Um, it's, it's not about men being persecuted as, and portrayed as rapists. What do you think, Anne Atkins, about the what she was wearing point that see, some people... Well, the some watch, OK, the, we've got a kind of blind spot on this, and I understand why, because 20, 30 years ago, one or two stupid judges... If you Contributory me. negligence yeah, was the yeah, phrase. Which Judge is completely James Pickles, wrong. Think, completely, yeah. completely, completely, completely wrong. If somebody commits a crime against me, that is not my fault. Yes. However, I have three daughters. I hope I'm bringing them up to protect themselves. I hope mm. I'm bringing them up to be sensible mm. and not put themselves into situations, just as I bring my sons up, not to put themselves into dangerous situations. What do you mean by put, putting themselves into So, OK, all right, I'll give you an, uh, a concrete example. Uh, we've got an 11-year-old going on 18. And a year or two ago, she started wearing makeup and hot pants, and she looked absolutely gorgeous, and she loves going down to the town and hanging around the shops. It's not a terribly exciting town, but she finds it very exciting. And I said to her, you look stunning, but if you're going to go down to, uh, to town like that, go with a friend, make sure you've got your phone and be back in half an hour. Because I could see that young men would target her looking like that. She looked 18, but for the goodness sake, and she was 10. The majority, of, the majority of young women are at risk from people they know, not strangers, for a of start. Of course they are. And yes. so, you know, what, you know, what surely, yeah, OK, can we all agree that this latest, uh, raising the bar, which I think is a good thing, this latest thing is good because it's asking for more clarity. We all want more clarity. The men want more clarity. The women want more clarity. Nobody, no decent person wants rapes to happen, right? Yes. So we want more clarity. But as soon as we start talking about what people are wearing, we're pandering to the idea that women shouldn't be able to wear exactly what they want. Of course they can. Look, look. Of course they can.
course they can. They have a right to wear what they like. Of course they do. Some years ago, I drove my children down to Dorset. I was very distracted because one of them was ill. I came back a few hours later and I had left the front door completely wide open Women on a busy prophecy. street Women and something had houses. been nicked. And okay, I was not the criminal. The other person did wrong, but I felt a bit of but a crap. Now, can't. girls, but, the, it's n there is nothing wrong with teaching your daughters. Well, if you wear your, if you wear those clothes, you are entitled no. to wear those clothes. You have a legal right to wear those clothes and not be assaulted. But you are putting yourself at more risk. No. Why are we talking about what women should be doing and not because talking about care, the fact that men should I not care, be raping? Because I care about my daughters. But this yeah. is about yeah. men's heart. Natalie, like men. yeah. You know, men, men, you yes, know, rapists course. are not accidentally um, having sex with no, people. I, I, I know your hands. Up with. I'm coming to you in just you know, one second. That people are not the late, conversation rape. took an interesting turn. Yeah. Yeah. Rapists, yeah. Do not, Natalie. rapists are not accidentally having sex with women who are wearing. It's not about sex. Is not a, a rape is not about sex. It's about power fundamentally. And so this is not about sexual attraction. It's not about lust. It's about having power over somebody else. Well. I, want, I wanted to talk about the fact that we're talking about this consent or, or, yeah, or the absence of it. Actually, I think. We can train people, we like to say no. We can go to rape classes and say, and you have to say no. But actually, in that shocking moment, do we have that vocabulary? Can we actually vocalise it? Can, are we in, in an emotional non state non -verbal to, communication. Be, to be able to yeah. even have non-verbal communication? And there have been so many instances of people actually just freezing. Does yeah. that, are we back there where we have to say... No, it's still a crime. Of course it, it was still yes. a I only use that instance because there is nothing wrong with giving women tools to, to protect themselves. And Natalie, men. So, and and men, yeah, and men. Men. Natalie, Natalie do you think the situation then, given the, the fact that, you know, consent uh, was, was, was inferred when uh, two people were blind drunk and it wasn't actually consent, and then in the morning, because of the, as you well know, as we all well know, the difficulty of a situation, people don't want, don't want to go through the criminal... Uh, justice system. It's so difficult for people to do that if, you know, if they, you know, requires such bravery. Do you think there are some men walking around who have raped someone and don't in their own minds even think that has happened? I think, you know, that anybody, people who commit crimes who do terrible things do no, rationalise that, don't they, and, no, say, they and might, don't even realise that they've done something. They might not have even considered the fact. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why this, um, talking about consent is so powerful, because for men who, who are kind of going, oh, well, she, you know, she wanted it, you know, I mean, you only got to look at the Robin Thicke song, Blurred Lines, to see that young mm. men are being told that, you know, she wants it, even though she clearly doesn't. <laughs> You know, and it's so actually, rise, the act I wrote that. We talk about it's social media, but let's protect Bethan. themselves. Well, so it was the other way round. I think. Okay. You know, sorry, sorry, Bethan. Young young boys and young men, um, especially, are watching more porn on on yeah. television at a younger age or on the in internet, and I think that's making them have a perception as to how they can treat women. And we're in the 21st century, and we're still faced with films like Fifty Shades of Grey, where. Pe Men are being it's acceptable. Women are flocking to, to see it. Women, in that women way. are reading it well, in their I, millions. I disagree with the whole concept of what that well, film so is, what about the, is you trying know. to portray about a woman uh, feeling that they should be dominated by a man. Where are where but are it the is women a chick flick. in it is a chick flick. Well, Richard? Portrayed. It's a what? I don't call it a Richard? chick flick. Richard, you've got men who are It is a chick flick. Richard, do you know what? Wait a minute, please, um, Richard. It, 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 people, people have indeed very mixed messages here uh, because the, 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 that the Fifty Shades thing is a feminist phenomenon. It's of, not of, a feminist it, phenomenon. It's not your, <laughs> it's not your <laughs> sort of feminism. There are different sorts of feminism. In there its own way, it is a feminist phenomenon. <laughs> I would have thought the thing, the, the, the thing here is that, yes, of course, young men ought to be taught that women's bodies are precious. But I've got a feeling that actually young women should also be taught that their bodies are precious. And if you, go, and if you, yeah. yes, but in this issue, I think it is well worth remembering an older chivalric idea about women's bodies being precious, and men need to know it. Women need to know, and and it is a good idea that mothers should say to their daughters, "Of course, it's your perfect right to dress like a tart." But it's not uh, very clever. This is the problem that uses words all the time. No! no. no.
Nick, Nikki, this is, this is exactly the problem. This is part of a wider issue about the way we think it's acceptable to speak about women yeah. um, and women's issues. And it goes beyond rape. It's to domestic abuse and attitudes more generally. We see that on the internet all the time. And, language. and, and, lang and language. language used. And, and I certainly don't think that sort of language helps. Oh. Uh, the fact, the so fact, suddenly we the haven't fact, got a word for the fact, the fact, the fact, uh, well, this, this, this is We've got to ban those about, words. It's about, it's exactly right. no it's women are ever It's about shaming women and what we think. That low-level attitude that goes on in, in daily life, online, which I think encourages, in the end, the type of attitudes towards women that we see. The facts speak for themselves. Rape is underreported and it's under-prosecuted. So something is wrong with the system if that's the case. Thank you. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you all very much indeed.